What is up? Welcome back to another episode of the Van Flip Podcast, or this could be your first time checking out this podcast, so welcome to the show. We have a very special guest today, someone that I've followed for, I don't know, most of the time that I've been, quote unquote, into the scene, uh, Dallas Taylor. You may remember him from a long time ago. He was uh, the original vocalist in a band that's fairly big currently, Under Oath. Uh, he left that band to start his own project, Maylene and the Sons of Disaster, and we're just going to, you know, catch up with old Dallas today. So, Dallas, how you doing, man? I know you're in Ocala. We just talked about that. We're not too far off from each other, so you enjoying the Florida? The Florida weather's not as hot this year, I don't think. Yes, yeah, good to be on the uh, podcast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not not that bad, I don't think, as years uh, prior, I guess, I've, uh, I've been here for a bit since my accident. So I think a few years back when the, uh, uh, one of the hurricanes went through and we had no electricity, mm-hmm. I think that uh, seemed to be way hotter that time. And, and we're not in August yet. So. True. We're only a little bit into the summer, well, midway into the summer. But, you know, the entire country seems to be uh, very hot. And it's just strange that we're kind of not as hot as the rest of them. And we usually are vice versa. So it's. Um, that, yeah, that is, that is, I've been noticing. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a nice change of pace, I believe. So let's just uh, let's just get right into it, man. A lot of people kind of are curious, you know, as to what you've been up to in the last five years. Obviously, you did have the tragic ATV accident in 2016, um, which I'm sure most people already know about. And if not, they can Google it or they can look it up on Lamb Goat. You know, there's definitely a story or two about it. Uh, you kind of had some trials and tribulations going forth from that. I know you kind of got messed up pretty bad. I don't know if you want to get into... Um, into the details of that, but if you want to, by all means, I'm sure people aren't fully aware, but how you've been holding up? I know you're, you're, you're as good as you probably have been in the last couple of years. So it's nice to see that you're kind of, you know, here. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I had a fun, uh, wrestle with a four wheeler. And, uh, when I first had the accident, like you're almost in this fight or flight. So I was like, Oh, uh, you know, I, well, I was really bad, but when I first started coming out of it, I had a severe brain injury, mm-hmm. broke every bone in my face, uh, carotid artery, lost one eye, the other eye can't track, uh, don't produce tears, lung damage, all that. So when I first started coming to it, I was like, you know, in six months, I'm going to be back at it. And then about, about a, two months after you could, you're still in shock. I mean, my nails didn't grow or my hair didn't grow, uh, because it, it, my body was using everything to kind of keep it uh, keep trying to stay alive or healed. Yeah. So when reality hit, I just, uh, it just, my brain injury has been the main thing that's like, it's crazy because you can't, it's the one injury you can't see. Uh, mm. But it's every day, it's like a chronic pain, you know, headaches, uh, brain fog and all that. So, um, but I've been pushing myself more and, uh, and I had, I just had an eye surgery, um, maybe a month ago or a month and a half where I don't produce tears. So they tried to sew the eyelids, uh, yeah. more shut to, uh, make the, and he did a bad job and, oh, uh, no real bad. Even the other doctors were apologizing. Like, so both my eyes got infected my eyelids and uh, I'm still healing from that. But, um, yeah, I've, uh. I've been uh, slowly trying to uh, get back into um, reality, and I've kind of laid, I guess, laid low. Um, but um, I've had, like, you know, some great friends since the uh, beginning of uh, my accident that have, like, stuck by me. And so uh, I've been working on some creative stuff with uh, one of my uh, some buddies, uh, Brad Lehman, uh, kind of Steve Savis, uh, Jason Todd and um, my friend Cuddy and so just doing that uh and then I also when I was bad off um my my good friend Scott Hansen uh filmed a movie which is coming out in theaters September 10th called Bad Candy and it's uh I got Corey Taylor in it and uh mm-hmm. my longtime friend Chris Dudley uh from Under Oath he mm-hmm. scored it and so and it's got the Zach Galligan from Gremlins and a lot of other friends so he kind of, when I was bad off, he's like, come up here. I'll figure out how to get, you know, and I was like, not good. So I'm in it for a second. Hopefully I still make the theatrical at least. But it's, it was, it's so good to have friends like that, that like have stuck by you. And like, and so 
after that, uh, he does music videos for all kinds of So he was down doing a music video and like we were brainstorming. So we started um, writing and in a pre-production for a, a script about a, a girl metal band from the 90s. Mm. Uh, and so that is uh, called Virginia Bitches and that's going to be on the lookout for. And there's actually some really cool people that we already got involved that I think will surprise a lot of people. Uh, but how the, this industry goes, you know, it's like uh, keep throwing the wall till something sticks. Right. So I, ho- I hope this is going to stick, but, you know, it's just ways I'm trying to crawl back in, into reality. And uh, I think with the pandemic happening, how everyone kind of got put back, like I'm coming back into reality, it feels like when everybody else is. So I'm like, I'm not that far behind. Right, right, right. Kind of so, yeah, speaking of the pandemic, because you, uh, you know, you also have all these other ailments and such like, you know, like infections and stuff like that from surgeries and such. Um, were you like and I, I don't want to talk about COVID too much because as you can probably already tell, we've talked about it. No, times. Talked to, yeah, yeah. yeah, But I want to know, like, because, you, you know, you're someone who does have like prior medical issues. Like, were you really worried about like, you know, the whole situation with COVID and, and everything? At first, and I think everybody was like just fear like you thought anything and then um i actually uh i was you know i've been careful but uh i was yeah i was i've had i have ptsd now which i always thought that was something for guys in the military like i never knew and like and i always had i had panic attacks and stuff before my accident but so when it first happened i first went out in public yeah i was major but uh it was weird because you know everyone's not weird but you know everyone's like this is crazy it's mm-hmm. and i'm like this is like just another tuesday for me you know like i've been locked up like, I've been, I've been locked you guys up are bit. you guys are hanging out with me man for the past <laughs> years now now i know a little bit what it's like so uh yeah i just uh i've been you know pretty careful but i i don't really think about it i guess that much because i also when you like survived almost dying it's mm-hmm. kind of that uh i mean i'm still careful i'm not an idiot you know but uh it's kind of one of those things where uh, it doesn't freak me out as much. And, and I guess it didn't hit me as hard because it just felt normal to me to be yeah. stuck at home. I was in this in my bedroom as usual. So. Yeah. How long, how long, uh, well, how long were you in the hospital at, post accident? Like right after the accident, you were, you were there for a little bit, but how long until like you kind of, you know, were able to leave your room and to kind of like not even leave the house, but kind of just like move around the house and stuff like that. So I'm still in that process of, uh, I feel like now I'm like around a 19 or 20 year old in that aspect of the uh-huh. thing. But, uh, so I was in the hospital for a month and I didn't have insurance. So when you don't have insurance, they turn you out quick, even yeah. if you're not fit to leave. So I left the hospital the day my trait got taken out. I mean, my trait got, I still had a hole, mm. my feeding tube got taken out and I still needed to be on oxygen, but I, I went home without it. And, uh, and my oxygen would only get high of 90. I hadn't had the lung operation or anything yet. So I probably should have been in the hospital. Uh, oh, wow. I had the accident beginning of August. I probably should have been in it all the way until the fall. But I came out early, which hospitals are not fun to live in. So I'm thankful for. But um, And then I was like thinking I could move, you know, but I still was like, I had to learn to walk again, right? And uh, eat everything. And so... Then reality hit, and uh, my pain got worse. I had other, all kinds of other complications. So, yeah. not until really, and I'm still getting better. But uh, maybe the past year and a half or so that I've been able to actually think clear. And the the crazy thing, and I've never really, I guess this will be the first time I've uh, I've even said anything. But uh, I just start. I get tired of it. I just quit stuff that i told they told me i could never be off of mm. and i was just like i'd rather find my base level than keep being on and meds are great when they work but a lot of times they start doing the opposite over time mm-hmm. so i quit uh and i was on you know pain meds was the one thing yeah and I it, was assuming that was it had changed good. everything in my body like that's where i had thought they thought i had thyroid uh disease um Hmm. my bowels didn't work even like i had even i couldn't even pee like uh uh testosterone all that so once i quit that it's it's right at a year ago and 
the thing with the brain injury is I tried to quit it so many times before, but all the symptoms of withdrawal are the same symptoms I have as a brain injury. So all the doctors would be like, no, these are just your symptoms. So when I finally was like, I'm just going to quit. It's like the gift that keeps on giving like a, um, like in the movie Christmas Vacation. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, the Jelly of the yeah. Month Club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cousin Eddie. Uh, but, uh, Good reference, so by the way. Two, great reference. Yeah, great movie. After two weeks, um, the, the hard withdrawals stopped. But then it was like two months of just waking up every day. Like I felt like I'd been in the accident. Mm. And so, and I just had to stick it out. And now that I'm off of it, I, uh, I still now I realize what stuff I still have. Like I still overheat, have headaches, chronic pain, and uh, all that. And I'm learning to deal with it. But uh, going back to the um, pharmaceutical pain meds, I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it it altered me way too much. Yeah, no, I, I get that, and I uh, I commend you for you know trying that. Obviously, um, as we both know, we we live in Florida, and so they are definitely a little uh, loose with the pain medication around these parts of the state. So, uh, you know, and I, that was another question I was going to say, like, uh, you know, with all the medication, with the pain medication, preferably, like, were you ever worried about like, you know, becoming somewhat dependent on that, you know, and just, Well, I, I had like, and I was, um, and they don't tell you that. Cause like, I never really, yeah. Why I had they? taken pain meds a little bit before my accident whenever I need, but I never, so, and I had had a couple of buddies that are like, don't stay on that stuff. But I was, I did need, I was in such bad pain. Right. But, um, and then they've kind of cracked down really hard um, on even, so there was times, it was like every month, uh, they, I wasn't getting enough meds and I was having like withdrawal symptoms every month. And it was like hell on earth. Like, mm. uh, and that's one of the reasons I really kind of wanted to quit because, I mean, there was so many problems and I must have been on, maybe 30 meds a day, 20, wow, 25, wow, wow. maybe 30, but like, like 30 pill, like pills or just different types of pills. Probably 15 to 20 different medications. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was on nerve medicine Crazy. and That's they give you all kinds of stuff to like basically make, I was like in a, uh, pharmaceutical kind of like coma. Cause yeah. they, they make it where you're not, you're, you know, cause with a brain injury, like, your brain's not right at first. Like it's like you can't think straight, and you have your filters about that much. And I, I never had much of a filter before, but it's still, you know. So, uh, so they put you on everything to almost just make you okay, just to lay there and, uh, Heal and up, not you know? be. But um, it started doing the opposite, and uh, yeah, and and then it was getting harder to. Uh, find doctors to help and uh oh sorry no, you're good, yeah. don't find it. Do, do, uh, doctors to help me and stuff like that and uh and i finally just was like i'm tired of the fear of am i um the fear of like i have to rely on this medicine and the fear of like i'm gonna not make it if i miss it if I, if the pharmacy doesn't make it this month, right? What what could happen? Because like a lot of those medicines, they throw you into seizures, yeah, and all that. So I kind of just get tired of it, and it, and I I still am on, on uh, some neuro meds that help my brain try to slow down because uh, it's like a ping pong ball, like just getting shot around in the right, head. Right, and so right. uh, I wake up and I feel like I've been on a, a ride. And, like a roller coaster, like I feel like I'm gonna throw up All headaches long, yeah. and the pain. So I've been on stuff to kind of help that, but yeah. Um, are you taking more of like, because uh, like you said, you've given up all these pain medications and other medications. Are you kind of approaching it from like a holistic other, like a, a like a holistic standpoint, whereas you might be doing more natural type medications or like CBD type stuff. Yes, um, uh, I actually do. Like so, I'd be, um the neuromeds, I realized I just have to, to take, uh, right. because, and it's like, they actually give me stuff for Alzheimer's patients, but it, it fixes in the abnormalities in the brain. And I take some other stuff for headaches, but, um, like the best doctor, a lot of times, even if anyone's listening, 
to this or watching this that has had a like the best doctor we can be is just researching on our own because a lot of times doctors will just keep adding stuff on and don't know your symptoms so i started looking up everything that can help inflammation so i take uh turmeric black garlic mm-hmm. saffron ginseng uh algae uh, uh spirulina um and uh i started taking um it's a uh, it's, it's kratom but mm-hmm. uh it's the one thing that helps my pain and i don't have to get back on um pain meds and there's been a few times i'm like well, i just want to make sure that i don't have anything sim- similar to pain meds so i've quit at times and like if pain meds are like the roots chris of a of a withdrawal symptoms uh coming off kratom is more like a shitty mcdonald's drive through so it's not it's not bad like coming off of it but it really does uh and i try to take as small as possible so i take a lot of things that help it so i don't take much i'm not having to take much of it Mm -hmm. but um otherwise i'm really kind of and i uh i uh in florida they they approved uh marijuana so i have my medical but medical license but it's such for me uh, such a hard medicine as as that to judge where i don't use it a lot of times and i try to use more of the C, higher cbd uh yeah. because that meant when you're taken as a medicine it's uh it sometimes does work and then sometimes it's like too much and like oh and what especially with the brain injury like i didn't plan on right being uh no i'm buckled in for six, a little bit <laughs> yeah so uh and uh yeah i just try everything um to uh everything natural and everything that won't cause all these you know other um reactions to my body or other you know like uh chains down the way you know like oh, i'll start messing up yeah. this and then you'll have to take a medicine for that and that medicine messes up this and mm-hmm. so uh yeah the natural stuff and that's uh it's crazy that everything we uh there's so much stuff in natural that that actually works but we uh we don't realize it but then i also realized that too much of everything is not a good thing so like our turmeric was like good for inflammation so i started making pills because i can't t- stand the taste of like that <laughs> and allergy yeah and, like, of course uh, of course and i was taking too much turmeric and i couldn't even hardly pee because it slowed that down oh, and like wow. so i'm learning like you know, I'm like basically playing a scientist of like how much you know to do like uh with uh with everything and uh and I think I figured out a good balance and I make make them into to capsules because uh Kratom is not too delicious to taste <laughs> mixed in with turmeric and uh black garlic and uh spirulina and I can only imagine I can only imagine. I can only imagine, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I was going to ask if you kind of like dabbled with the medical marijuana because we do have it here in Florida. And I didn't know what your relationship was to that prior to the accident either. So um, it sounds kind of like you do dabble here and there, um, you know, with it, obviously the high CBD as well. So I was going to ask, like, you know, it was that your first kind of experience with it or were you were you previously, a, 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 you know, in it? I had previously taken, but it's funny because everyone always like my second man, they're always like, man, you guys are like stoners or whatever. Like <laughs> some of the guys, uh, probably were more, I don't, but I never really, it never really was something that like, uh, it, uh, it just made me have more anxiety or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, so I, it wasn't something that I, uh, really, uh, cared to, to, and that's the thing is like, alcohol and then i'm alcohol is legal and that is now it's starting to come around but that is like it's a med like it really is a medicine and uh like even our our bass player uh well the bass player in the other band i was in Maylene, brad neiman uh he actually has started a uh he grows cbd seeds and it's actually he's made a medicine it's higher cbd he does it by hand I can't think of the name of his uh, of his company, um, uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's it actually works. Like it's just like uh, you can put it on like lotions or whatever, and it's uh, 
people don't realize that because, you know, it's just the same thing with like how people think, you know, they used to refer to seed or hemp as they would like marijuana. It's right, not right, the right. same kind of, just like poppy seeds and opium. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, after my accident, to, to look at it from a medical side, um, I do use it sometimes. It's still, you know, like I said, it's a hard medicine to judge, but it really does help at, at times. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy. The um, I don't know how, you know how we look at things, certain things like as like oh that's and then when you look at you know that's bad or yeah well, well you were told you were told weed and marijuana has been you know it's been a drug for the entire time that we've been alive you know with yeah. the, with a dare program and everything like that we were kind of brainwashed to think of it as one way and like you said like alcohol is is readily available but it might be some may say it might be worse than than marijuana or weed and like now it's like flip so it's kind of like trying to cast off all those negative stigmas, you know? Yeah. And, and that anything in moderation, that's the one thing, but, uh, and that's, uh, our perceptions. So I, I always, you know, make it like when I thought of it as a medicine, even though it was the exact same thing, it was a completely different experience. Like, cause I was thinking of it as a medicine. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, I always joke, like, you know, if you're to blindfold someone and uh, and tell them you were going to take them to Hawaii and you just took them to a part of Florida, they really wouldn't know the difference except the temperature. And yeah. it's like how our minds can like, and I've been, after my accident with the brain injury, I've been so amused of just how the brain, just perception that things can completely change how we view something or even how it works in our body. That's why they do, in most tests, they do the... Um, placebo and the real because a lot of people can even think and a lot of people can even make themselves sick off of nothing (laughs) right yeah with all the worry and stress of just thinking about it yeah yeah Um, so it's kind of like a moderation thing and and when you use it anything if you're using it to help you and not uh abusing it i think it's uh it can be a great thing yeah well i want to also say like uh chances are the stuff you're getting from the medical dispensary, even though it's it's still marijuana, it's probably a little more heightened than the stuff that we used to get in the street. So it would be yeah. very hard to judge some of that stuff. Yeah, and, and I never, before, I never, uh, that much. I mean, there's uh, every, every once in a while that try to, because I've had, had OCD and anxiety, and like, it, it would always make it worse. I'm like, that's not for me. But... <laughs> That was all a head thing because now when I think of it as a medicine, it does help my PTSD. And, yeah. uh, but I found, uh, which there's a lot of stigma about Kratom, like, oh, that's just uh, something for people, you know, like, as like an open. And it, it yeah. really is a medicine when not abused. I mean, it's the one thing that's helping me not go back on pain meds. Yeah. But it is one of those things, like, when you get used to it, even Coke or caffeine, you have to start drinking more of it and you have to not because everything you get used to it. So it can be abused if you're just nonstop. But uh, I tend to find that is the best for me as far as helping me not be in miserable pain and be able to function throughout the day uh, when mixed with other stuff. And then, uh, yeah, at times I will uh, use the medical, but uh that's uh I, I found the kratom is is the best yeah i would assume uh, you know the medical medical marijuana would be like a sleepy sleep time aid situation because you know they they can make them quite well to where they make you pass out pretty quick well and what's crazy for me is like so uh like an indica strain which would make people pass out with my brain injury that makes my brain think normal and actually mm. makes me normal which is very strange because uh but it's still one of those things where you know and it's uh, if you if you do if, you, if, you, if i take more than what i should yeah then i do but, but if i take just it, it is a great um medicine uh and uh yeah and i don't you know i'm not uh one on here to say oh it's for you know that's why i refer to it as a medicine because um you know with anything, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not, uh, 
one that supports abusing right 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 that could be anything anything. that's like coca-cola you know what i mean i i probably yeah admittedly abused coca-cola for many years and then i kind of realized i was like dude i am addicted to it i'm just sucking i'm sucking the can down not even enjoying the taste of it i just need the sugar and the caffeine and then yeah i felt like really i was like dang i'm not in control of that so i i gave it up uh i gave it up uh, within this year and you know I'm now to the point you where... You probably had some withdrawal symptoms, course, even though... Yeah, of course, of course. There was headaches and just kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, all sorts of shit. But um, yeah, I just kind of like... Now I can have one or two. And, and luckily, it's not the same kind of like, um, you know, feeling or whatever. It's not like the crackhead feeling of just like getting it, no, in, getting no. it into my yeah. body. But even then, sometimes it doesn't even taste as good. Or like I had remembered it, you know? It's like your brain tricks you a little bit into thinking you crave it and you need it. Uh, and the crazy thing is, so my mom's eye doctor, I think, because um, she has health issues, he had heard that I quit pain meds called Turkey. And so he wanted to meet me because he's like, you are one tough person with your injuries. And so he was, and he actually, uh, go. I don't think he even goes to the, he's like higher up at the church or something. You know, I was raised in the whole Bible and all that. And right. like, he was like, you need to get your medical card again. Cause I did have, and I stopped and he's like, and then I've even started using magnets and they actually pulled the, the, you put magnets on the parts of hurt and they actually work. But, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool to see even older people that would probably have been so against something like that being the ones that are saying doctors like you need to yeah. do this you know to, for your health or uh, to, to deal with your your pain it, your... it is very interesting to see how like there is a shift with, with not only just like you said marijuana but just like in um in uh you know treating symptoms in general like with magnets whether it be with like you know psilocybin mushrooms or for like psd or yeah. MDMA for for all that you know mdma uh, mdma for all that other sh- all this stuff but like it is cool to be in the time where there is like a, a mental shift as far as like approaching, uh, I don't want to call it more Eastern styled medicine, but the Western well, philosophy kind of, is kind of dying a little bit. No. And that, that is right. Like the, I knew it was like switching when I was raised like Southern bad, this like, I mean, super uh, conservative. So when my mom and dad were both like, we should maybe look into that because you're on 15 to 20 pharmaceutical and it just keeps causing more problems and whatever we can look into that's more natural because they were, they hated seeing me in that state of just always being in, they'd even have to help me get out of bed. I'd be so bad off. And so for them to even be the ones that are like, Hey, we should look in. I was like, yeah, it definitely is uh, changing on how people perceive. Yeah. Uh, different things yeah just kind of nuts um i think we've kind of probably exacerbated all that you probably want to talk about the injury and such like that so let's oh, kind of, yeah, yeah. let's kind of switch gears and talk about some music stuff how about that <laughs> yeah i have one track thinking so no it's all me good done. i mean that, that's that, that people want to know so it's all you know i just don't want the whole episode to be about everything that no, went bad. Yeah. yeah so that's the one that gives from the brain injury is the one track thing. And I just oh, no. keep going. And it's not on you. Dad. And the OCD I still have. I'll just keep on repeating. It's it. nothing to do with you. I'm just trying to, you know, uh, no, pace the sure. podcast out a little bit, but no, I appreciate, you know, you being so open with that because obviously, uh, there are probably many other people not with the same type of injury as you had, obviously, but that are dealing with something like that. So, you know, it's yeah. always good to get different opinions. And like you said, we come from, we live in like a highly conservative state for the most part. And uh, in one that also is kind of like pretty well known for their like opioid situation and crisis. That maybe that was on. that rock dogs. Yeah, yeah it was so, horrible. So, you know, um, it's good. It's good that things are changing. And like you said, like your, your, your close knit family is also changing their views on stuff and whatnot. But <clears throat> so yeah, let's, let's bounce back into music. Uh, earlier, yeah, yeah. <laughs> earlier in this, uh, earlier when we started, you said you were doing some creative things. You kind of touched base on the movie, uh, you know, the film stuff that you were doing. But it, are some of the creative things musical as well? Like, are you kind of like, uh, you know, dabbling back into that as some as part of like your healing or, or process? Uh, yeah, and uh, I it 
Okay, yeah, it, um, I'll say that. And, um, I <laughs> think. Don't let uh, the cat out of the bag or anything, but you know. I wanna, yeah, I wanna, um, with whatever I do, uh, not necessarily uh, surprise people, but you know, let you know, let people know, like you know, with whatever I'm doing, I want to do it for such a such a sincere place that's like, hey you're not alone with what you're going through mm-hmm. and uh and whatever ways of uh art or creative outlets i can do that will uh, relate to people uh i'm working on and so yeah um that might be uh one of the things i'm uh, working on for sure uh it's a uh, and before my accident i had gotten wrapped up into the cogs of the uh the major uh powers that be in the entertainment industry and uh had lost all joy and i guess creativity i mm. kind of just did what i was told mm. and um so now with whatever i do from from film or if it may be music uh that it will be from a sincere place that's uh that's hope I want to show people kind of what I've been through in hopes that it will relate to them and what they're going through because we all like how my injury you can't really see because it's a brain injury but we all have injuries that no one can see no matter if it be an emotional thing or something and people really especially in today's times want something to feel like hey I'm not alone in this and uh and that's like I think that's my main reason that I survived that accident is uh is to kind of uh be out here to you know and I've been kind of quiet lately but I've uh, yeah I've been uh rustling uh quietly and uh in hopes to uh to you know make an impact on um on my life in a positive way and on other people and uh and give people, you know, hope and joy and right. as well as myself. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to say you specifically are one of those people that probably came up a lot as far as like pe- wanting people on the podcast, you know, like a guest, because there is very little out there outside of the standard update that you may have posted yourself, you know what I mean, on, on social media yeah. and whatnot. But there definitely is, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming, and I'm pretty sure in my assumption that there are, gobs of people that are interested as to like what your struggles been like, you know, and, and, you know, how you've gone from almost rock bottom. I mean, I don't even know if you were, how long you were unconscious, if you were conscious after the wreck and everything like that to where you kind of realized how like messed up you really were. And then, you know, it's been, like you said, it's five years since then. And and now you're just kind of coming out of the shell kind of, and, 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 you know, telling your story, which by all means I, I think is very commendable and brave. And, um, yeah, it's good. It's good that, you know, I, I reached out to you and I know it's been, it's been, you know, we've had this kind of uh touch and base with each other for the last couple months. Yeah. And I, I you know, and I, I felt like this is the one that I should just let organically have whenever you're ready. Cause you do have these things going on and I feel like it's such a vital part of like, you know, the culture and the scene of, of certain kind of metal core and metal music that your voice kind of be heard and your story be told. So it's, it's great to have you on, honestly. So I, again, I thank you, even though I thanked you earlier, but um, no, it's great. No. And in the, in the spring, uh, uh, one of my, one of the best friends I've ever, my friend, Corey Steger, who started uh, under oath with me, uh, he was hit in the car and he, and he passed away. Yeah. I remember you posted and you, you and the that really person. hit me hard, but, it also and uh gosh his wife and kids i love so much and uh and uh it's motivated me more to like you know like i feel like almost like you know him saying hey i get had to leave early but you gotta you gotta do something to to let people know like hey we're all in this together so um that was a rough and it's still getting over and then a good friend of mine actually a friend i've played music with uh got COVID, and he almost passed away and Mm. he's just coming out and so that also was uh a big uh 
But then me and him talk a lot, and uh, he's a he's a drummer I play music with and stuff. Uh, but uh, Ryan Rafferty, and so that also was a it was a hard time while we were touching bass. But it also has been like I guess the fire under my ass has been like you know uh, you got to you know get moving. We're, we're still here. We got to do this, you know, because yep. we think we're gonna be alive forever. Uh, well, I don't, but a lot of people do, and we don't realize we're only here for a split second. Yeah. I mean, we think about Benjamin Franklin, it's like, it almost sounds like a story, and he was like the rock star of his time. Or if you think about King Tut or like uh, um, things from the, like back in the Bible, it's like, it almost feels like fairy tales, but that really, those people existed. But we think that we don't realize how quick we're here. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, how long and, time is know, like those people you're talking about even ben franklin that sounds so old so long ago but yeah it's, it's like a hundred something years ago you know or a yeah. little more than that it's not really that long ago <laughs> and it's and it's crazy how fast we for, forget and that was another thing after my accident where i was like people only remember you for like the legacy you left which means like how you impacted people or like how what they'll say about you and how you treated your family and a lot of people just want to, you know, just work and then they die and no one ever knows their story. And I feel everyone has a story to tell, but a lot of times we're too afraid, but it's like, we're only here for a second. I mean, like you should tell it no matter what it is, because that's what we're, that's what we're here for is like to, to be in this together. You know, we're not supposed to be to ourselves or, you know, like, our own like thing you know or uh saving up as much you know and i i used to think everything i thought that mattered like uh doesn't matter like when uh you're having your ass wiped and you're having to eat through a yeah. straw because your mouth's wired. like you realize like all oh, those finances or the label didn't push this or i didn't get this role it's like you realize and that's where i'm coming from now with wanting to do art is like hey you're not you know uh, i know where you're coming from, even if it's a different thing. And like people always tell me too, like, oh, I have this problem, but man, you have it so much worse. And I always say like, hurts hurt or problems yeah. were problem. I don't yeah. care if it's me in an accident or someone going through a really bad breakup or losing their job or anything. <clears throat> That's still the same thing that causes on the hurt on the heart. And like, uh, and we need to talk about it with each other. And, you know, like, uh, therapy i guess in a way and that's why people i think love music uh is it is a way of therapy for them in different ways yeah no i agree i agree with that 100 percent uh because especially in our little you know niche of music there's a lot of aggression that can be let out that is positive and then again like you know most of the scene uh whether it's hardcore metal or metalcore most i think the basis of that is you know togetherness and camaraderie and we're all one and all that stuff so i mean that's what it kind of attracted me to it all when i found it you same know? here yeah because it was something different and it wasn't um not saying that other other genres don't have that but it was way more prevalent at the time when i got into it that's why i was drawn to it is it felt like holy holy crap these guys or like I felt like a family, like and it felt like, oh, they know what I'm about. And like back in the days, like I'd see someone else with a shirt on, like a certain hardcore shirt or metal shirt. And I'm like, that guy. It's like almost like a friend right from the start. Right, right, yeah. You have like a connection, you know, a similar a similar interest, and you understand already that that niche is so small in general that if you see someone in the wild, it's like, oh, hey, I know you. you I know, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, hey, can, can you give me? Uh, for some reason, my phone didn't charge, and ahead, I have like five percent. I just got to plug it in real quick. No problem. Take your time. Yeah, go ahead. That'll show my good eye injury or my brain injury. You're like, oh no, I'm almost talking over. Two seconds. Nope. Take your Sorry time. Sorry about that. No, you're all good. Good man. job. That's my dipshit self. People can see the reality. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, yeah. Well, you know, we all keep it live and keep it real around here. Plus, you know. You no, can, that's awesome. You can still hear me, so it's not like we're you know, you're just off camera for a little bit. But this uh, this yeah. also goes audio, so the people who listen won't even know. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not doing anything. I'm just taking a uh, sip of water. So, um, let's talk about uh, Maylene a little bit here. Um, 
you know, during the time of your accident and all that stuff, you guys were kind of in the midst of recording, I would assume, number five, because, you know, Maylene uh, has two, three, four, and uh, I would assume the fifth record was going to be five. How, like, how far along in that process did you guys get in, like, what do you plan to do with any of that material? Um, sorry, another pause. Sorry about that, guys. All good, Drinking man. water. If you're not seeing um, So after the last record we, we put out, it was, gosh, it was, um, and, you know, like, I don't ever talk bad on anything because like you know i'm one of those guys like even if i get an argument i had to let someone get me mad enough so it's not always someone else's fault but i felt so i'd been through a divorce and all this and i was just not i was in a down place and so i just, just was like trying to provide i guess in a way and so the the last record we did i kind of uh became i did what i was told kind of thing you know like uh if you make it more, we're not going to kind of put it out or push it if you don't make it more um, marketable or whatever. And are we talking about number, just, are we talking about number four? four? Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, and I kind of went along with that out of fear and, you know, I didn't have any, um, the creative side of, of, of uh, and there is still some, like that record is the most, um, showing my heart lyrically and I kind of got it out in that way but a lot of it was um I was just trying to please other powers that be I guess and uh and so after that record um we kind of like didn't want to be on so we kind of made it kind of where we could I don't know if we stopped trying I forget because a lot of my accent I forget before the injury, which right. is a good thing. <laughs> I, a lot of that's gone. But, like, I don't remember playing shows at all, uh, which is crazy. Like, like I, in I general remember, or I, just, like, right before yeah, the accident? In general. So, like, even under oath? You don't remember under oath? Wow. No, I can't. But I'll remember stupid things like, you know, I'll be like, oh, back in the days, I poured water on that guy's head in the van. That was funny. My friend that lives here, John, like I was telling him. I remember weird things, but uh, not shows. But um, That's crazy. Uh, and so I don't remember a lot. But after we stopped, some other things that happened that really just made us kind of upset. Like we were like, it's almost like we were even bringing work to the label like that like you know like one thing was like a a segment and you know just in a commercial somewhere but it didn't happen it was too long getting back and like and it's a major you know we were on the division of warner so it's a major uh the tons of people involved and they kind of go through employees pretty often no offense to uh warner or anything but that's just how it goes and um so we kind of stopped touring for a while because like we just want to Somehow we we went out of this uh, horrible cycle, mm -hmm. and then we started like even when our record came out two weeks before our A and R uh, quit or get fired, and so we had a new person coming on board that didn't know anything about us, and so mm -hmm. we had it was just so we finally uh, were able to part ways, and um, we did a few tours after that, and. It just was like I had almost uh, started doing, I felt like I was doing music uh, as a job that I didn't enjoy and I'd lost all of it, you know, and, and that's when I was in a, I was in a really bad place before my accident, just really depressed. Uh, and my accident, as weird as it sounds, was a blessing. Uh, yeah, it kind of like woke uh, you up a little bit, huh? changed my whole life but like so we had started working on we did a tour in canada we the last we did it was canada down to the uh u.s but we didn't have snow tires and i had a the tra trailer we had uh no brakes or anything and like so we wrecked uh in canada on like black ice and the whole tour just was like yeah just other problems so then tour uh me and uh me and our base were like this is kind of like this is this is you know this yeah. is not, not what we want to what not what we want to be doing 
And then I somehow decided to start and some other things that came where people were asking me to take little roles here and there. So I started getting acting, which if you're down in life, that's probably not the smartest venture to take uh, when you're in front of uh casting directors i'm like oh you suck no they don't tell you that but they no, yeah it's stressful eye. it's stressful yeah the audition yeah. process so is not ideal you get told no more than yes and so that wasn't good so we had started working on some stuff but uh kind of just like let it by the side and then um my accident happened and we talked about messing around and then everything happened worse and then uh yeah it's, uh not not too long ago, I just felt the need to start uh, maybe trying to make, a, I guess, uh, art. I, yeah. I really don't know uh, where that, uh, what it will be. or Where it will take you, you know? I think it will be exciting for people, um, no matter what it is, if, uh, if it is music or if it's a, or if it's, but I, uh, I'm, I, I have a, I have a love for life again. And, uh, it's like people I talk, I've heard a long time ago, I heard this band I used to love called Artemis Pile Driver and they were older guys, but we used to play with them. And, uh, and this was the mailing was first started and he was like, you know, uh, heavy metal is a young man's game. And I was like, I don't even know what he's talking about. And then I realized, like, if you're super established, then it keeps going. But as for a lot of bands, you start getting older. And then you, uh, you, you've you probably seen it a lot in Lambda class, but they probably have talked, because I love that about you guys are unfiltered. So you probably have talked trash on many of bands are like, these stupid sellouts have right, made right, a right. freaking well, it is- horrible rock radio record. Right. And it's almost every time it's, Guys get scared and they're getting a little older and now they have bills. They don't, they're not in their, uh, parents' basement or wherever, you know, and it's like, and they kind of do whatever they're told and they lose all hope. And it's the bands that kind of just stick with it and go, we don't care. They seem to make it through it. Um, but, uh, after my accident, it was like, I feel like I'm like 16 years old again wanting to do stuff like yeah. i have that excitement and like uh even you know uh my other friends and stuff they're always like you know they almost look at me sometimes like man you're a little too carried away because i'm a very huge imagination so they're like you i think your imagination's a little out of let's let's try to bring it more reality <laughs> but i have that like kid like and it it is that when we're younger we have that just no we're not words, afraid yeah. and mm-hmm. we can do anything and then when we get older we start thinking more more responsibilities and, uh, more all this more stress and you know it's, it's tougher to do things which is weird that you bring that up too and i don't mean to interrupt you but like my thing is no, no. my my thing with lamb goat that i'm trying to kind of like do in general is like how do we introduce younger people to heavier music that's not not and again i'm not trying to like say like bands that maybe produce a more like rock styled record or what what not you know i i understand it and like there's other bands that like i can understand like even if we want to go as far as say like big rock bands like five finger death punch or one of those big headliner type bands it's not yeah, yeah. it's not my vibe one bit but i also understand that like maybe someone finds five finger death punch and then goes to a show you know and one of the opening bands is someone that's more aligned with what we hey, enjoy Bray. yeah yeah and then again that's yeah. That's a big kind of scene band, but then you can get a little bit more under the crust, and then from there you go a little bit more under the crust, and then like you fall down the hole and you get really into the underground. And my whole thing is like, how do we, how do we speed that process up and like you know get around the whole having to listen to those bigger bands or radio rock bands or whatnot. But it is also interesting at this particular point in the scene and the, the how long it's been around since you know early eighties. Oh, I'm sorry, late eighties, early nineties. Whereas now, like bands that are coming out that are people in their late teens, early twenties, they grew up with their parents listening to bands like Slipknot. So their take on yeah. he- their take on heavy music is completely different than what we had, you know. So it's interesting to see the dichotomy of like how that works out. Yeah, and uh um it's and then you know, it's also like it's also for the older bands not 
getting where like they're like sound like old grumpy like oh new bands can you know they're they right. can't do it like uh, or you know what i'm saying like it's already been done before and it's like uh because there's a lot of new i mean they're in every genre there's bands that just do the same thing and it just sounds but there always is this great new stuff that i think that i hear and i'm like holy crap that that's really good and it's uh the cool thing is with the internet i i used to hate the internet and i still <laughs> have my uh battle with it because it took away, you know, album sales. Like sure, back when sure. I, I would go, to, you have to go to a show and there'd be a distro and you'd buy your fingers through, you know, and try yep. to find uh, the uh, whatever new record was, you know. Or, or, uh, and nowadays, it can kind of kind of catch on like wildfire. Uh, and that's kind of cool that, that it surpassed a lot of those uh, major labels are not being able to do your own thing. With that, you also have a lot of just flooding of just everyone's right. Everyone's a photographer. Everyone's a, a director. Everyone's an actor. Everyone's a everyone's model. everything. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's a musician. Every, yeah. yeah, and it's like, but it, you still do find the cream. Of, you know, you still find the. And I'm big into that where I'm like, if I don't make it because my stuff's not good enough, that's good. I just want the best. Just you know, like, and I'm even for that of. Uh, you know, still letting the, you know, the best will always come out. Right. Yeah. Like you said, cream will rise to the crop or the top. Um, God, I was going to ask you. So, oh yeah. So what was the, uh, what was like when you kind of left under oath and you started Maylene? Oh no, no. Let me, let me, let me jump back. Let me jump back. Uh, Cause you were talking about your issues with like Warner brothers music and such like that and having to do, um, you know, do what you were told kind of situation. Was any of that, um, cause you guys were on ferret for a while. Did you experience any of that with ferret by like, I love those guys. And, uh, ferret got bought out by, uh, Warner and, uh, yeah, I love Carl. I haven't talked to him forever, but, uh, I think, yeah, Carl was in the band Nora, I think. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I can't think of the guys, but they're all, they were all great guys that were just old, like sing guy, you know, like not old, they were just sing guys. And like, so it did feel like a family and then kind of like Barrett started picking up. So they got an offer and, uh, and it kind of ended that, uh, that fun kind of, let's just, yeah. you know, yeah, creative, they're... you know, like when you're working with like back in the fair days, they're just like, yeah, it's awesome. Let's go with that's cool. You know? And then it's, you're like, you know, um, like on the last record, one of the songs that we didn't want to be on the record kind of, one of his B sides ended up being our single, mm. and uh, that was not our choice. And uh, and uh, so it's kind of like you don't we lost a lot of the creative um, side. Where I yeah I do love the old like, and there's still labels out there like that uh, that I'm you know fans of that even bigger ones you know. Uh, right. Epitaph, uh, Fearless, Fuel by Ramen. Like, there's different, you know, and uh, I don't know if Equal Vision is still around, but uh, I think they are. I'm sure out of it. I would I'm say so out of I think they but are. It's we'll still go with cool. that. But it's still cool that there's like, and there's probably a million other ones, but those are ones I've always seen that they, their artists still seem to do their creative side. And I, and I really think that's an amazing thing. Yeah, Ferret, Ferret was definitely, there was two major ones for me in my in my journey through this kind of music was trust kill and fair were like, I was going to say two that. big ones. Yeah. And it's, it, I was kinda, about to say trust kill, yeah. it does kind of suck that, you know, they got too big kind of, and then they got both kind of like got bought out in some weird way and then kind of killed, you know what I mean? Just kind of killed everything that the label had built. And it was, uh, it's kind of a bummer. It definitely was, you know, yeah, and it, and I it's the same kind of thing where like bands try to start making late you know songs to hopefully put money on the table, unless you're an established band that you can still kind of and then some bands stick with it. But I think the thing with Ferret might have been like, here's money and I can take care of my family or whatever, and and they thought they I think they even thought they still were gonna have creative and I think it was just bamboozled kind of yeah came in yeah. And it's even like that with the film, which I've gotten a little bit like, I love the A24 uh, yeah, film yeah. company. Like Everything they put out is just like, it's 
you know it's going to be like its own thing and like uh so i think that's cool too with even there's still some companies out here that are like doing they're like we don't care yeah. what other people say we're going to do our own little it kind of like thing on it, it kind of takes back to what you said like with bands that just kind of stick with what they do you know i mean like people or companies or brands or whatever that just kind of like don't bend to that narrative of like trying to be the most popular thing or to be the most clicked thing that day or whatnot. Like there are so many bands that I grew up listening to that are still around that I don't think will have the, like, I don't think bands starting out now that are like, you know, five years old or something like that will be able to stay around because they are playing that game where they're trying to write certain things for certain markets and such like that. Yeah. But, But you got bands like, uh, you know, every time I die, it seems like that band itself has been the same band almost the entire time. Yeah, they're unapologetically them, and it's it's worked in their favor. Like to no I end. love those guys too. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lamb of God, yep. good guy. You know, uh, Randy's an awesome guy. He's so stuck with it. You know, uh, and then there's other bands. You know, like uh, Wog and Molly and different different genres. But it's like it's awesome because they. Uh, our clutch we've used to tour with a lot like they kind of just stuck with yeah, that's who they are and and they have their cult fan base because they because they know they're not gonna uh, and i and i applaud uh bands like that and i wish i would have kind of well and i don't really wish because i believe everything i'm wearing now where i think everything happens for a reason even my accident and it, it always makes sense in the end mm-hmm. so uh I think even for me having that kind of record, even though I was more open lyrically, uh, I think it's, and my accent is making me into whoever I am and whatever I'm going to do coming up where it's like, yeah. oh, that's, that's, it makes all sense. Now. I don't know if we answered the other question prior. I might have gotten distracted myself too as well, but how far along in the process for the fifth record were you guys in? Like how far along um, beforehand? We kind of had given, uh, I mean, we had, we did some, a few demos here and there, but it was like pretty, uh, and that was even me, uh, I had started thinking, okay, I'm going to try to get into acting or whatever. Right, right, I, right. Just, I had got that last tour I put in such a, put such a bad, I guess, taste in my mouth and I wasn't in a good place anyways. Uh, mentally. I was like letting, uh. I thought everything that mattered that was bringing me down, which I know now it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, I let it tell me who I was. And I'm big on that now, like uh, how we we let things, our people or tell us who we are. And that's not really us from negative. And I'm, the power of words is crazy or yeah. just the power of uh, um putting things on people or we put on ourselves and like so I'm I'm big on uh you know not letting uh now um negative things tell us who we are because that's why I think we had not pursued much of the fifth record is because yeah. I was like well that record I lost uh I lost my creative, not all of it, but some of you your know, lust a bit for of it. it. You know, you you weren't attracted to it. And yeah, and then I was like, you know, and I've always struggled with. I think everything I do is a piece of shit. So it's like, you know, I was like, well, now I really see. You yeah, know, yeah. And it's like, uh, and that's just something I and I have a lot of friends that are in this that struggle with the same thing. They're just, it's almost like they don't want to be rock stars or huge. Uh, things so they do the opposite and just bash themselves right. and stop. And, it's like that imposter and that's what I, stuff. And so that's what I was doing. And so I was just like, you know, uh we didn't get far, I don't think, because it was just like, oh it's just gonna suck anyway. This is bad, you know, whatever. Interesting. And Interesting. Then, yeah. Um how did the, how did you guys like where did the this is going to be a two part question and I'm, we may have to, whatever, I may have to ask you the second part later on, but like, how did you get in to, from being from Ocala and it is quite rural, rural. How did you, Very, guys, yeah. how, how did you guys get into like that kind of music? Cause like not only did you guys, Maylene come from there, but like Under Oath started there and then a data member also kind of started around there. Yeah. Too. 
Wage so, war. Yeah. By, and again, yeah, wage war. Seth last night. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like, how did how did that scene even pop up? You know, down there in that area. I, I very randomly, like, I never really heard it. I mean, out here, I didn't know anything of it. And I think I was at uh, some kind of, like, I don't know, like, growing up, like, you know, the only thing to do out here is pretty much, like, go to, like, we live next to a church. So it was, like, right. I think I went to some youth event that was together, and I met some skater kids, and, like, they started letting me do hardcore. I was, like, this stuff exists. And then I just got obsessed with it. And so I started playing bass, like, in a, an alternative band. And uh, and one day at a show, well, one of the guys I met that lived up here, he was into hardcore. And so we just talked about it. And then I, one day at a show, I was sitting, we, I was my other band playing. I looked over and the guy had like a other hardcore shirt on. And it was Corey, my friend that just passed away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm trying to start a band. He's like, oh, me too. So we just started a band and I started booking shows in Ocala, which is crazy but people started coming out and yep. uh and my friend donald from here uh he still is keeping that going i love that dude so much he's he's kept that going but um it was just kind of like and it wasn't an easy start i mean we were like no one got it really. <laughs> i could understand that, yeah. yeah i would i grew up in high school in williston so uh it's the middle of nowhere and so I was the only skater kid there and like there was a kid in my guitar class and I started letting him hear heavy music and it's Chris Dudley that plays keys for him. Nice. Um, and it just kind of happened. And I started booking, like I brought Shia Lude uh, into Ocala and then I brought uh, this band called X Stolen Blindside one time like back in the day. Yeah. And then we would just start branching out and then it kind of had like where the a day to remember guys were coming to shows and, uh, and it kind of just, I don't know how, but it kind of caught on in yeah. the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, for those who aren't really up to date with like horse capital. <laughs> yeah. Geographically with Florida. Cause people have the assumption of Florida, obviously like palm trees and beaches and stuff, but like Not the, central. The, the middle, the central <laughs> part of the Florida is, definitely agricultural like it's heavy heavy agricultural it's i lived in alabama when i was in Maine, and uh my mom is and dad are way more country than like <laughs> gosh i should get her in the same word because you guys would be like is that even english yeah. but like so it's like super country uh a lot of like just like uh blue call you know like uh and uh it's not, yeah, there's not much going on in the central part, but I, I love that because I think there is a, almost like a, a want for something more. And I think that's kind of where heavy, it was just like, there was nothing. And you hear that story with a lot, even like with the, the, the black metal bands, the metal bands that started over in, you know, uh, Norway or in yeah, the middle yeah. of nowhere because it's like there was nothing really going on and that was what they cling to and people would come out and I think uh, I think that's kind of where Ocala came from because there was nothing else to do. Yeah, it was, like the, it was like the only alternative lifestyle kind of situation going on outside of like, you know, tending to the, the farm animals, riding your horse from point A to point B because I mean, I've, I've driven by there, I've gone through Ocala, I've been to Ocala a bunch of my entire life and it is just like, to, even to me, because I live on the East Coast, so there's a beach next to me, and I lived in Tampa on the Gulf Coast, and, you know, there was a beach there. And when you go to the major cities in Florida, like Miami and the South Florida, and even I, I, even Tallahassee is not as, the Panhandle isn't even as rural or country as no, yeah. Central Florida. And it is it is really eye-opening when you go out there. <laughs> and Ocala's picking up a little bit more. It's kind of crazy to see, but it is... Uh... It's kind of like behind the times of like, oh yeah, many you, years. Uh, do you remember? Because uh, when you're talking about booking shows and stuff like that back in the day, I also booked my own band shows and stuff like that. So Ocala was one of the cities, just because. And again, this was before we even knew what all was out there. But Ocala was one that we yeah. always look at, and then Lakeland too. Lakeland shows was a website yes. that, that hits like it popped up in my head when you were started talking about all this, and I remember going to this website, Lakeland shows. And I was thinking, like, damn, that is uh, 
that's also a small rural area to have shows. And that's like a trash area too, no offense, <laughs> but it feels like you're like, because yeah. that's the one thing also about Florida is a lot of people I think came here on vacation and never left and just stayed out in the sun and got leather. And that's where you have the Florida men <laughs> Florida thing. Man, yeah. So you get some characters out of it. And Lakeland's one of those towns where you get some crazy uh, guys that I think and, and women that have just kind of stayed out in the sun to bank for a lot of years. Yeah, they've got the, uh, they, they're the ones carrying the pet alligators around with them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's funny to hear all the stories. And that's the thing about Florida is like, it really is one of the crazy, People always say, how is that connected to America? But oh, it yeah, really yeah. is. And as far as beauty, though, like all the rivers, and there's so, it's crazy, you know, like, uh, even on, they filmed on the Silver Springs, they filmed like Tarzan, yeah. Preach from the Black Lagoon and stuff, but you can still go down the river and monkeys got out when they did Tarzan. So <laughs> there's monkeys and there's alligators yeah, yeah. on the side of the river you're going down it and you think you're like, Am I still in a? Is this American? This Am looks I in the crazy. Amazon or something? Yeah. Uh, you know, if 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 Florida had like mountains, I would never leave. You know what I mean? Because yes, I think it would be all the scenery that you need. You know, like you have like the 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 elevation with the mountains. You got the beach. You got like, and again, Florida's thick with brush in the middle there. There is so many, yeah, you know, so much uh, plant life and such like that. But. Like you said, it is a crazier part of the world, uh, a part of the country for sure. But I wouldn't personally give it up for anything. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm a first generation Floridian. My family's not from here, but like we talked before the podcast, you, your family is like embedded down there. Yeah, like so like, fifth you, or sixth yeah, you're, yeah, you've been, you, your family's been there for a long time. But like, I would never, I don't know if I'll ever move, move. You know what I mean? And if I do move, I'll come back for sure because it is like nowhere else in the country and i know we get a lot of bad stigmas but like screw everybody else you it's i think it's hilarious oh, i love yeah. it it's like <laughs> it's not just disney world like this like or i would say like orlando is not florida because that's like the tourist spot and obviously like a lot of people just come and visit there so i don't necessarily understand i don't really know how many people are born and raised technically in orlando especially in miami yeah. i didn't know it's one of the most tourist places in the in america more i think it's the second one uh, I would go down there for my eye operations, and it is so many just uh, people that come there just to see my. And I never even realized that. Yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, like the coast, uh, especially down south, like a lot of it's a lot of like people from up north come. No, nothing, and other people from up north. So I'm not saying, but it, you know, and then Ocala has a lot of that. Like right outside you have the villages which is the crazy oh, God, retirement yeah. that has all the stds because the people throw their keys in and have sex parties so oh yeah google yeah, uh, if you're listening to the podcast just google the village in florida and that's, yeah, that's a wild story villages. it's a place to go in your order if you want to catch some stds <laughs> yeah, they don't care down there no but to piggyback off of what you said about people coming down here and moving and stuff like that or or on vacation i would assume probably a good chunk of those Florida man stories are just people that come down here and have a little too much fun. And then they end up yeah. getting into trouble, you know, Panama city beach <laughs> and never left. Yeah. Oh, Daytona is wild. Daytona's wild too. Um, so obviously you left under oath, you know, and that was more of like a tech death metal situation for the, for the, you know, way back when. Um, yeah. And I can understand how the death metal vibe creeps in, in there because obviously Tampa, is a hotbed oh, yeah. for all that kind of stuff back in the eighties, nineties. But it's interesting. In Orlando, death yeah. obituary. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. Kind of. it, we've established that death metal has a place here in Florida for sure. No matter yes. what anyone says. But uh you're when you guys released your first Maylene record, <clears throat> I can remember the song uh Tough as John Jacobs was I believe the first single. And um that I had never heard anything like that. And being a Floridian, obviously, you know, you do grow up listening to a lot of Southern rock. Leonard Skinner's from where I'm yeah. at, you know, and it was just like, holy shit, this is like a blend of like everything that I like about hardcore and metalcore, but it gives me a little bit of that twang to like really hold on to my Southern roots. And I, I won't say that I enjoyed it right off the bat, 
when I first heard it, I was like, what is I don't this? think I did either. <laughs> <laughs> when, I heard that, when, I heard, when I heard that song, I was like, what is this? And like, I, is this for real? You know what I mean? Because I had never heard anything somewhat like that. Yeah. But the more I listened to it, I was like, damn. And now, even to this day, it's one of my favorite Maylene songs. So it, um, it is like, it, it's a cool blend. And then, of course, you know, you guys have expanded on that as the record's you know, uh, progressed and you guys found yeah. your sound and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that first record, man, that is some, you know, uh, you're experimenting and trying some new shit and it just kind of works, man. It started out really as a kind of, I never thought I'd do, I didn't plan to do music after I grew and I moved up there and I knew a few guys and we just started, it was kind of a joke. It was just fun. I could see that to be honest and, with you. <laughs> and then we were thinking of the name and I was like, I remember going to the mall Barker reenactments, uh, where she was killed off. I mean, it was, her story's crazy. You can look that up later on with anybody. But, um, so we were thinking of band names. So I was like, Oh, Maylene is a disaster. That'd be, you know, be crazy. And then we first started like John Jacobs, when I was younger, he was a guy that led this thing called the power team and they would come uh, and they would rip up like <laughs> yeah, phone books in half shit, yeah. for for God. And so I got like roll a frying pan up. And so I thought that was just, I mean, I love the dude, but I thought that was hilarious, you know, right. like just that kind of, so we kind of embraced all the stuff from our childhood. And then the other guys that had grown up, you know, in Alabama and the thing sticks uh, up there. So, uh, and we started out as like just having fun and it kind of just took off without us even, I mean, we used to just drink sweet tea on, not as like a gimmick, but that's just like, you know, uh, yeah. and then we got stupid where we would start pouring like brute aftershave on people just to make it like <laughs> real, like have that real track. That was more of a comedy, but then like, yeah, it just started taking off and then it became serious I and mean, it was always fun. It was just, I just wanted to do something that was fun and, and different. And then it was funny because when it started, everybody was like, that is totally you. Like, in under <laughs> oath, you were being, you were trying to be not you. I mean, I was still being, but they're like, you were trying to, like, not lose your accent. I'm like, that's the idiot that I've always known. You know? The kid, yeah. I, I forget who it was, but someone was like, yeah, I remember the first time I met you, you were riding up on a dirt bike, you know, uh, in the dirt. And so they're like, this band is exactly. And then at first, people were like, oh, they're not from the, they're not really Southern. And it's like, I grew up on a dirt road to, uh, Yeah. 10 years old same house still but uh now it's all nice because all the horse it's now become the world they put the world equestrian center in a few miles down the road okay. and another huge one but it, so it's building up but it's still out here you know i grew up shooting shotguns and, <laughs> i mean the video for the the video for the song it also just paints it so well you know what i mean because like yeah I, ca I can see that that going down on just like a a week night or like not a week night but a weekend or a friday night like that is what I would picture you guys doing in Central Florida or something like that, like hooting and hollering yeah, in the fucking barn and stuff. And Alabama was the same kind of the guys all singing out with. It was the same kind of deal with just some dudes that were just. Uh, <laughs> and so it kind of that video was based on. And it's, the cool thing about the video is there's a lot of guys that went on to be uh, another like my buddy Josh that now plays in Adelaide Dying. Mm -hmm. like, uh, and uh, my buddy Jamie that played it, I can't think of it. But it was cool to see, like, them and, the, and then they to go on. Uh, so Alabama, Alabama also felt like uh, it was a really tight-knit, like, almost family kind of thing. Oh, for sure. Um, let me uh, wrap it up a little bit here. But I wanted to ask, is there a theme through the first three records? Like, because you do have kind of, like, these spoken word parts in some of these songs. Um, and I could be, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of made it sound like it was kind of like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of spoken word thing where it sounded like bank robbers or something like that. And then it kind of made me yeah. think like, is there a storyline that goes along with the records or do you just have like an, an overlaying theme for every couple songs? Like, like uh, another one of my favorite bands, he is legend, which I know you guys are pretty yeah, close yeah. with, yeah, Skyler and stuff. Yeah. He's got this kind of like story that every now and then he'll throw into a song, you know. And I just was curious if Maylene has some kind of like some situation like that. So 
and it it ended up working out not to our disadvantage, but like because we were such based on like the story that later on we wanted to branch out. It was like well, we you know didn't want to, and then when we thought we'll branch out a little bit, we branched out to the opposite of what fans were on the last record. So it's like oh, we branched out the wrong. Even though I kept some of the lyrics, but um, so Maul Barker was in the early 1930s her and her family they were uh basically bonnie and clyde they went around robbing yeah. people stealing killing people well they were uh hiding out uh up the road here like in uh, lake weir uh, right up right by ocala and somehow they got found out and there was a big shootout and uh and her and her youngest son got killed and so when i was a kid i'd always go to the reenactments Mm. And I always thought that was crazy, you know, candy apple and watching them shoot up, you know. Right, and uh, right. yeah. and then in real life, every one of her sons were shot and killed at different points in life, like one trying to escape Alcatraz. So when we started this band, we're like, it's kind of crazy, of like divine justice of like, if you live a life of just horrible and it'll come back around, you know, some people call karma or whatever, you know, like that. Uh, mm-hmm. So we started out with that, kind of like telling their story. But almost like, I always like to sometimes to uh, give hope to the, not, you know, but you know, sometimes paint the villain like in a way that we're like, you feel. Humanize him, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so that's kind of where a lot of the themes came from of these sons that have like, part of it was like, hey, don't do what we did or, you know, don't take the path. And then other ways they're like, you know, kind of like the infamous thing, like, you know, we always know we'd make it in the paper, you know, we would be yeah. home one day. And it's like, uh, and to show like the bad side. And, and then it, later on, it kind of got hard because we're like, man, we, we should branch out a little bit. And we're like, well, we kind of really pigeonholed <laughs> ourselves. And then our way of not pigeonhole, we thought, oh, we'll make a complete. Yeah, that last record was not the, that was the other powers to be, but right. uh uh, and there's still some great songs on the record, and I love it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, like, like I said, you know, like if someone makes me mad, I can't say, "Oh, you made me mad." I just decided to get mad, so I made that record. Right. And uh, I look back, you know, with all things in life, something like I wish I would have done some things differently, but uh, yeah, it was kind of by uh, telling the story of uh, through this um, family and kind of making it more personal, like the struggle they've gone through. And, Interesting. Any new stuff I do in the future, I want to make it more personal. Like, this is just literally what I've been through, and you know, well, yeah, you, show have, you. you have your own story. And now. you might not, you might not want to even. I like to show things that people don't want to see. You know, like people always want to show the upside, but you know, I want to show the the, the shit that, that people are like, man, I really didn't. Maybe that's a little too deep, you know, or that didn't. Mean, I don't feel comfortable with that. You right, know? I'm just right. like because we're afraid to talk about our insecurities or our problems. Mm-hmm. That's why Instagram is such a huge thing because people paint. And I love Instagram, but they paint a false narrative right, a lot of times. Right. And I like showing just the the freaking muck. Yeah. Know? Well, the when you when you start getting in the awkward places, that's where kind of growth happens. So you know, some people don't like to grow. And so they avoid those kind of awkward situations or uncomfortable things, you know, whether it's with somebody or themselves. Yeah, but I, I feel like uh, I live for those kind of weird moments, unfortunately. That, dude, we should I hang out because <laughs> I am the most awkward. I do it now on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I've, I've learned that if you say something so straight and it's the most off thing, people's brains can't compute it. It really. No, I know. So, like, one time at the hospital, the lady's like, any medicines you're not taking? And I was like, yes, methamphetamine, you know, that we need to look. And I was like, yes, methamphetamine. And for five minutes, she stayed looking because I was so serious. And I was like, man, that's meth I don't take. And she's like, gosh. You know, I'm like, <laughs> or one time all my doctors, and no offense to, like, I love everyone. So, no offense to any of, you know, people that are, are gay or anything like that. Nothing like that at all. Uh, but my doctor was checking me out and I had a bunch of blood work done and it was all these nurses. And I was like, I used to stutter a lot after accident. So I kind of stuttered a little more, but I was like, did, did my blood work, work show if I was homosexual? <laughs> and she goes, what was that? And like, they all looked stunned. And then I said it again, I was like, did, did was my blood work able 
could you find out if I was homosexual? And they still just all stayed there. And it was so awkward. I mean, it was not comfortable. And I finally was like, I'm just messing with y'all. And they're like, just get out of here, please. <laughs> like, so I've learned, like, if you say things so serious, people can't, com- even if it's a joke, they just can't yeah. compute it. And they don't like their brains, like it's a deer in headlights. Yeah. So I love opera now. So yeah. that anything I do will have that opera tendency with it. Well, I hope any kind of you know uh, scripts you guys write, you uh, you you explore all those awkward awkward moments too, because that oh, for sure. that's yeah. good for a comedy and stuff like that. <clears throat> well, let's uh, let's kind of wrap it up, Dallas. Uh, you said something earlier where you you kind of you do kind of seems like you pay attention to music coming out. So what are what are some bands that you might that you might have like found in this past couple of years that you have really become fans of? Uh, real fast. I don't. So when I was in the bed, nothing to do. I just would stay looking at everything, like almost like uh, pop culture, everything. So I listened. I found a lot of stuff that maybe um, I don't know as much heavy stuff recently. Uh, uh, there's an artist named Warren, which is more like electronic and like uh, stuff. But I've been like into um. Um, man, uh, I drew a blank. Uh, I listen to like every every type of thing. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, I go back from newer to old, but um, newer artists. Uh, uh, I, I drew a blank. No, it's all that. good. Uh, when I ask this question, a lot of people are like. Oh yeah, newer bands, um, and they can't. So you're not the only person that has ever had trouble answering this question. So by all means, because I listen like from like uh, a group called Daughters. So I even listen oh, yeah. to like uh, Black Pink, you know, K-pop. Uh, mm, uh, interesting. To to uh, and a lot of times with the heavy stuff, I will always go back. Uh, what was this band? I can't even think of the name. Uh, Gosh, me and Chris always talk about them. I can't even think of them right now. But uh, a lot of heavy stuff, I always go back and, and, and uh, listen to the older yeah. stuff. But I love newer. Uh, there was a band from Florida I heard recently, and I can't think of the name of them. They're like below Jacksonville, but they're they're really good. And, uh, mental something, I can't think. Uh, but, uh, I'm trying to think yeah. myself here. Hmm. I don't know. I can't even think. Um, uh, yeah, I like I like pretty much uh, anything uh, as long as it's you know I can enjoy you know, it. Get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah every style um, and I even like just really out there stuff. Uh, <laughs> there's an artist named I think Arca. And he's Portuguese, I think, and it's very uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, well, uh, it's interesting it's how intense. you know you've kind of uh, tapped into the world outside of that rural area of the country you live in. You know what I mean? Uh, you 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 have my, it, you have interests that don't necessarily coincide with like coming from there. You know? Yeah, my brother he's older, but he listens to everything. So I'm always hearing all kinds of new stuff that I'm like, holy crap! You know, like how how did you even find this yeah, stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, was it? I can't, my brain. Yeah, coming, don't even yeah. don't even stress it at this point. Don't even worry about it, man. But uh, they ra- they, they rap and they rap. Uh, it'll come to me later. <laughs> 20, 10, the second we get off here, I, the second we get off here, it'll pop in there. Yeah, I feel I'll like, be going to bed. I'm like, dang, that's it. Blah 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 blah. Oh, boy, yeah. Man. Well, Dallas, man, I appreciate you taking the time to come talk to me today. And we did go a little over what I told you, but um, obviously it was. I oh, it was great talking yeah. to you too. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, I definitely want to check back in with you in a little bit, you know, see how you go, uh, see how the progress has gone for you in general and where your art's taking you in, in whatever form that may be. But uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you being flexible. I know it's taken, you know, a couple months to get you on here, but I, again, we appreciate it. And I'm sure the audience and your core audience definitely appreciates the update man so 
we wish you all the best, obviously, with your recovery that's ongoing for whoever you, yeah. whoever ho- knows how long. But hopefully, you know, we can get you back to um, – Not, I don't know if you want to get back to where you were, but, you know, get you back to I, function. I have to be better than I, than I was. And uh, I was going to say, too, I've always appreciated uh, the, the lamb good approach of not cookie-cuttering and actually just – sometimes it hurts to hear <laughs> – people's real opinions but you know what that's i like hearing honesty you know and uh and uh and people that hate that it's like there's something you know i like going back to the curtain even if it's stuff that i don't agree with or something that i'm like god oh, that, that wasn't that bad or yeah. they that band's not that bad or whatever like i like when people can just freedom of free speech and, and voice in their opinions and uh Yes, uh, it's been a pleasure yeah, to yeah. come on here. And, uh, well, I'm I'm glad that you weren't offended too much by that in the many years that you were a part of, you know, bands that were being posted about on Lamb Goat. And I'm glad. I that- used to start drama myself, no joke. I used to go on as a, an anonymous name and would talk crap on myself just to see what people would say. No joke, like, or the band. Like, I don't know why I got a kick out of that, but I would. I used to troll my, right. my own stuff. Nice. So. Have you ever been, uh, were you ever a part of the message board by chance? I mean, outside the anonymous comments. Uh, I don't think, I had different ones, but I don't know if I, uh, maybe I might, I, before my accident, I don't, but I might have been. Uh, That's cool. It's cool that you are open and open for that because there are bands currently and, you know, in the past that are not about that. And so we can't, we don't have a, working relationship so to speak <laughs> with them well so many bands too are they only want yes men. yeah right 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 and i love that i don't have yes men. i have people that say that sucks like even my close friends and i love that because that makes you a better even if it's anything like you suck at that quality of your life that makes you a better person and if, and you're not doing a hate but if you can learn to like give and take you know it's like uh it makes you and it also makes your skin tough i mean like right. Too many people are, they're just too easily offended uh, at anything. And that's a problem in our society right now is it's just too many people are just afraid to hear anything that they don't like. And it's like, I like that kind of no, I, start I, up. I agree. I agree. Well, Dallas, uh, I appreciate you again coming on. And, you know, I think you've dethroned John Jacobs as, you know, the toughest guy out there because you've. You you know you've been to the bottom and you kind of you kind of crawling back and it it takes a strong individual to do such and you know I'm sure you're uh, I'm sure you have a lot of people in your corner and, and you know your extended corner throughout the scene that have kind of helped you along the way and um, yeah man we look forward to touching back with you in a, in a couple of, you know whenever yeah I'd love to for sure yeah. and then uh, yeah man just have a great day and uh, we'll see I'll see you soon yeah you too and. Uh... Hopefully this bear, that's one thing too, the barometric pressure, that's a fun thing on brain injury. When a storm comes through, Oh wow! it makes your brain in any kind of ailment. So hopefully none of that comes through recently here in this Florida weather. But uh, it was great talking to you. And even if it does, it makes it more exciting. It yeah, right. It makes my day makes more it entertaining. Than it. Reminds you you're alive. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me I'm hurting. I'm like, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, man. That back still feels like shit. Yep. Yeah. That'll I'm happen. here. That'll happen. <laughs> it was great talking to you, man. And, uh, you as well, and I enjoyed being on and hopefully to talk to you guys in the future. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll touch base again. Uh, for sure. We'll, we'll get an update at one point. Awesome, man. Take it easy, Dallas. Take it easy. It was good talking to you. All right.